talking. Thank you, Dean Schwartz. Let me first congratulate Selena and Christine on your awards. Your contributions are impressive, and uh, today's recognition is very well deserved. As Dean Schwartz mentioned, I met Rebecca Ziegler Mono here at Stanford when I was an undergrad, and she was on her way to Brown University. I noticed right away how Rebecca easily connects with people, enjoys meeting new people, and has a genuine curiosity about their backgrounds. Rebecca started her teaching career in the nearby Sequoia School District. After four years, Rebecca moved to Zimbabwe with her new husband. There again, she found what she witnessed at Sequoia. Those with resources had plenty of opportunities, but she also saw the disparities that she saw at Sequoia. Those without resources had few opportunities, or none. So Rebecca took action. 20 years ago, Rebecca started an international education program at the United States Embassy in Zimbabwe at, 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 uh, in the capital Harare. And the program is called the United States Achievers Program, USAP. And Rebecca has often called this her life's work. USAP has helped more than 500 talented low-income students access full scholarships and attend college, often here in the United States. I'd like to give a special welcome to several of the USAP students who are here with us or watching today. Welcome. In his 2019 New York Times article, Frank Brunei describes Rebecca's efforts to create the United States, uh, USAP. In it, he says it's been re replicated in several parts of the world, but Brunei refers to the Zimbabwe program started by Rebecca as the gold standard. Recognizing the needs in the community beyond the scope of her program, Rebecca moved forward with her vision for a school for promising students from, a, uh, from across Zimbabwe. The USAP school opened in 2020. It is residential. Uh, it, it's for 11th and 12th grade or A-level students. And while growing, it's already fulfilling its promise. I want to go back to what Frank Bruni said, though. He described, in his article when describing USAP and Rebecca, he noted the story, it's a story of the difference one person can make. It is for her commitment to quality education, her passion for service, her drive to create opportunities for those who are often overlooked, her commitment to take a vision to reality that is my honor and privilege to present Rebecca Ziegler Mono with the Alumni Excellence and Service Award for 2021. Congratulations. Thank you so much. No human is limited. Anyone who knows legendary Eliud Kipchoge, the marathoner about whom the recent film, The Last Milestone, was made, will recognize this statement. Indeed, talent is evenly distributed around the world, but opportunity is not. While the setting here at the Stanford GSE would conjure up pedagogical theories and metadata analysis, all referred to my comfort zone, that of storytelling, sharing with you about USAP Community School in Zimbabwe and stories of a few of my remarkable students, as really this award is for and about them. In January 2020, just in time for COVID, we opened USAP Community School, a Quaker boarding scholarship high school in Zimbabwe for high achieving economically disadvantaged students founded from the college access program I had started two decades earlier. The core of our curriculum is developing students into ethical, open-minded, critically thinking problem solvers to apply their education not only in aid of themselves and their families, but also in aid to solve the problems facing their country. In addition to rigorous math and science A-levels, in classes we've developed in humanities, reasoning, and computers, our students take an intensive research methodologies class and then each undertake a service learning project which leads to a year-long capstone based on researching a challenge in their country and their community and prototyping the solution. 
When COVID hit, most schools in the U.S. shifted their classes online to Zoom or Google Classroom. As with much of Africa, we faced the stark reality that not a single one of our students had access to Wi-Fi or a laptop, and half of them even to electricity. We worked tirelessly to put together a way to continue school remotely using, during the national lockdowns. We used WhatsApp, low, bith, low bandwidth videos, and provided our students with data bundles, Kindles loaded with e-textbooks, and where needed, solar panels and batteries. Schools continued to meet on WhatsApp daily from 7 to 1, though students accessed with varying regularity depending on their location, their family situation, and their home realities in high-density townships, rural villages, and Zimbabwe's wine refugee camp. Try More's story is one of the depths of determination that can seize someone when they realize the transformative power of education. After days of frustration of his phone losing charge and the mountains around his home blocking connectivity, he defaulted to one of his talents, cross-country running. To access class, Trimore walked and ran 35 kilometers to stay with an uncle whose workplace had electricity. When the quarters proved too crowded and loud to accommodate him in his classes, he walked the 35 kilometers back home to his grandmother in his village. His next attempt to catch up on lessons was to walk twice a week, four hours each way, to the closest town, where he would sit on the veranda of a shop, plug his phone in, and download all of the videos and assignments he had missed, before heading back four hours again to his grandmother's home at dusk. Trimore would text me when he was leaving town, and again when he reached home, usually about 9 p.m., so we could both sleep with the peace of mind that he got home safe. Such determination is the first step in realizing that you have the power to make a difference. Jackie comes from a rural home in a very culturally and religiously conservative part of Zimbabwe. Most girls in her village leave school after grade seven and are married by 15, not Jackie. When she returned home during the COVID lockdown, she arrived to mourn the death of her nine-year-old cousin to cholera. Research led her to realize that his unnecessary death was a result of contaminated water supply and the open defecation system practiced by her village that she despised after experiencing flush toilets in town and at our school. Jackie started by clearing the bushes and cleaning around the village well. She then told her uncle that she was going to construct a pit toilet for their home. When she met resistance that this was clearly not girls' work, she responded by both picking up a shovel to dig a toilet herself, inspiring other youth to join her, and subsequently by courageously calling a meeting of all of the male village elders and the chief. Fast forward a year, and today, as she writes her final A-level exams and applies for university in America, Jackie's village now has built 12 properly constructed toilets modeled after the first one that she designed and built, and the chief has outlawed the bush toilet system that led to the cholera outbreak. With education, the sum is greater than the parts. 10% of our students are refugees at our school, students whose families were ripped from their countries by war and violence, and live suspended in time for years at a time in a refugee camp in Zimbabwe. There's literally no other context I've witnessed where education has such raw power to completely transform a life as that of refugees. Our refugee students witnessed incredible rates of dropout, teenage pregnancy, and despair in the camp when COVID forced schools to close. They responded by founding tweens. Together, we educationally empower non-privileged students their own organization to tutor and encourage fellow refugee youth to continue with their studies even when schools were closed. Together with the Tweens alum now studying in the US and Canada, they've built a youth center in the camp, they've secured a grant for laptops, and they hope to bring internet through solar for the very first time to camp. When education is seen as a means to solving challenging problems at home or globally, there really are no human limits. Leslie, a USAP alumni who studied engineering right here at Stanford, is now home in Zimbabwe working as a structural engineer, part of a project, <clears throat> a $40 million pipeline project to bring water to his native dry Matabele land. <clears throat> USAP alumni Tatenda Chopera, who grew up in a township of Mbare where AIDS, the AIDS pandemic was ravaging Zimbabwe, is a senior scientist on the vaccine team at Pfizer who brought the world the gift of the COVID vaccine. Catherine, a USAP alum and now trustee of our school, works as the senior scientist at ILRI, producing drought-resistant strains of maize seeds for all of Eastern and Southern Africa. 
It is people like these who inspire our current students to see that yes, despite the immensity of the challenges facing Zimbabwe and the world, they too can use their education to make change. No human is limited. When you view the world through the eyes of your students and you truly find ways to help link their education to how to improve life for their own families and their communities, everyone wins. It is then that education becomes a means to, to close rather than accentuate resource gaps and differences. It is then that education teaches people how to think and not what to think. It is then that education becomes a true source of hope in our complicated world. The Stanford GSE built in me a core belief in education as a powerful trajectory through which people, no matter what their circumstance, can make change. Allowing me to do at the time what was very unconventional, that was to combine STEP and what was then SIDEC, I think now ICE, by taking 20 plus credits every quarter, led me on this path. Combining classes in global theories of pedagogy and educational trends in African studies with applied classroom level classes and curriculum and teaching practice allowed me to envision how we could empower disadvantaged students to view their education as a means of creating impact. I am very humbled and honored by this award and the belief in this transformative view of education that it upholds. My sincere gratitude goes to all who are involved, the awards committee, the Stanford GSE staff, to my GSE friend, Mary Rahner, who spe spearheaded the whole nomination, and the team of USAP alumni and GSE classmates who added their support, to Stuart Bur Burden for the very warm and wonderful welcome, and to my first step supervisor, the patient Bob Farina, who showed me what sound classroom practice looks like. And finally, to my friends and families who have never stopped supporting my crazy ideas and dreams. To close, I thank over 20 years of students for showing me each and every day continually that truly no human is limited. Thank you. So let's see, what does it take? It takes uh, inspiration, proper values, knowledge, strategy, good cause, and I think adding to the list, willpower, right? Just a lot of willpower. So thank you very much. So this brings us to a close. I want to thank you all. I want to thank you all for being so giving. Uh, by being so giving of your heart to education, to others, it's what opens you up to the warmth of this event. I hope you had a chance to feel it. So one final round of applause. Thank you all. Yeah.